So W32.Sality is one of the most uh, common threats we see, and we, we often do see it, uh, especially outside of the United States, but it, it's certainly one that we see uh, within the U.S. as well. It's a very popular threat. And what I thought I would do in this video is talk a bit about Sality and maybe in particular focus on uh, what it does and to some extent how it does it. And I think this will take me about uh, two videos to do, so I'm going to make this the, the first part on the series on Sality. Uh, so first of all, Sality is... Uh, capable of infecting files. and In other words, what it does is it actually embeds itself uh, in other pieces of software. So if you have a piece of software along these lines, so you have a legitimate application, uh, Sally is going to basically uh, put its code in this legitimate application. And, and this is a notion that we call a file infector. Uh, it's often also called a parasitic infector. So let me kind of write that down. Um, file infector and uh, parasitic infector. Th these are uh, terms that are used quite frequently. Um, this is also known as a parasitic infector. So parasitic infector. Uh, and, and that's actually reminiscent of kind of the original class of viruses that we you know, first saw in the wild you know, some 25 years ago on, on, on PCs. Uh, and, and these threats, uh, file infectors or parasitic infectors, need to be embedded uh, in an existing host application. And in contrast, nowadays, we typically see things like Trojans, which are really standalone pieces of malware. Uh, whereas file infectors do need a host of some sort. Now, Sality uses a well-known technique that's called uh, entry point obfuscation. So if you think about uh, the way a typical uh, uh, piece of software works, it's got a bunch of instructions. Uh, and, and the first set of instructions that get executed, these are called the entry point. And what Sality will do is it will, uh, it will basically do two things. What it's going to first do is it's going to uh, embed itself at the end of the kind of main binary. Uh, and it's going to embed essentially an encrypted copy of itself. So let me kind of uh, put this in gray so you can see it's kind of an encrypted copy of itself is being embedded uh, down here. And this is sort of the encrypted version of Sality. Uh, the, main, the main virus body is here. Okay, and, and the first few maybe lines of code, I should say, of that are going to be a decryption routine uh, typically. Okay, and then Sally is going to then modify the entry point of the application. So remember, this is what we call the entry point, uh, the first thing that got executed uh, when the application is executed. Uh, the, the entry point code is, is, is uh, executed by the system. And once the entry point, is, uh, entry point code is executed, essentially uh, what happens is that through this code, uh, eventually, control is passed over to the main body and, and, and in that process the, the main body of the virus is also kind of decrypted and so this encrypted code turns into an actual virus body and then eventually control is passed over to it. Okay, and then that code is executed and usually after that code is executed uh, control passes back to the, to the regular software application. So everything looks okay but in the meanwhile the virus code has been executed and, and the process by which this control is passed is quite complex uh, in and of itself uh, and it's, it's done largely for the purpose of making analysis of the threat that much more difficult. Now, that's kind of how Sality works at a high level. It's a very kind of standard fare in terms of, 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 of viruses or file infectors. It's just that we don't see file infectors that commonly anymore. Now, from the standpoint of kind of malicious actions itself, one of the first things, and really the big thing that Sality does, is it acts as a downloader. Okay, so it's used to kind of download more stuff onto a system. Okay, and, and that includes things like other malware. So if, to begin with, uh, inside of Sality, uh, you will typically see in, in, the, in the virus body itself, there'll be a list of URLs. And these URLs uh, will point to um, other uh, places online where, where there is more malware being stored. And then basically Sality will uh, go ahead and uh, download the things at that URL or at those URLs uh, and decrypt that content and then execute it. Uh, and it's also important to keep in mind that sometimes, in addition to having single URLs, you might also have nested URLs. Maybe one URL will point uh, to another URL, which points to another URL, and, and, and so on and so forth. And all that eventually leads to some, some content online. So maybe there, there's a, a piece of kind of standalone malware out here, and that malware is basically going to be fetched uh, from the URL, uh, and then downloaded on the system, uh, decrypted, and, uh, and executed. Okay. And I think this particular point, you know, I, I should emphasize it a bit more because nowadays most malware uh, is really part of a broader um, ecosystem, if you will, and, and that really involves things like other pieces of malware. So to find 
uh, instances of threats like sality, I think you often have to have visibility into that broader ecosystem. Uh, so, so for example, uh, you know, if you identify that the file being downloaded is malicious, but you fail to identify the actual process that downloaded it, then what you're really doing is you're really addressing the symptoms rather than the root cause. And I find that that's the case nowadays quite frequently is people don't focus on that, that level of visibility into the ecosystem. They focus purely on kind of the last bad thing that was done, but not what caused that bad thing to happen in the first place. Okay. Now, more generally, there are a few different applications of sality, and I'm going to draw those out, like why are all these URLs being downloaded and, and, and what type of malware is, is being uh, put on the system. So the kinds of things that Salady can do include things like sending out spam, and, and spam, again, is kind of the killer app uh, uh, for most malware. It's, it's the thing that's most frequently done. Uh, Salady can be used for cracking passwords. So cracking passwords, very important application. Uh, oftentimes, uh, people may have access to encrypted passwords or encrypted versions of passwords that they got elsewhere, uh, and they need some computational resources to kind of try out and, and figure out what the underlying passwords are, and you can use uh, infected machines as, and you can use the CPU cycles on those machines to go ahead and, and do that computational work. You can also use Salady for, for proxying communications. So it acts as a, as a malicious proxy and what that'll do is it'll kind of hide the source of an attack. So let's say I'm, I'm trying to mount an attack on somebody else. Um, I can mount that attack through a malicious proxy and then uh, what, what people will trace the attack back to is a proxy. They may not try and trace it back to the person who was operating that proxy. Uh, and so if you have somebody's machine and you're able to compromise it and infect it, you can use that machine as a proxy for carrying out other attacks. And then also you can use Salady for just stealing information. So uh, it's kind of also an info stealer uh, in, in, the, in the classical sense of the word. Stealing information is another application of Salady. Okay. Now infected Salady hosts also become part of a peer-to-peer -peer botnet. And maybe what I'll do is I'll talk about uh, that capability as well as um, other capability of Salady that Salady uses to maintain its resilience in the system, and maybe I'll talk about those in the next video. So I hope you join me for that. Thanks a lot.